In this video, we're going to take our sample lines and our section views, and we're going to start computing materials based on that those sample sources. So in order to do that, what you're going to go ahead and do is you're going to go to the Analyze tab, and you're going to go to Compute Materials. So if we select Compute Materials, what you're going to see is Civil 3D is going to ask us for our alignment that we want to compute materials based on and our sample line group. So I'm going to go ahead and have dev align and dev x tech one selected and click OK. Inside of here, what you'll notice is that we are going to be comparing two surfaces, an EG surface and a datum surface. If you notice when I drop down, I only have one surface that I'm able to select, and that's because we only have one surface in the sample lines that we have created for our sample line set. So what we need to do is we need to hit cancel and then navigate to our sample lines. So what we're going to go ahead and do is zoom down into here, select our sample line and go to group properties. And then inside of here, we're going to go to our sections and we're going to sample more sources. But the problem here is that we don't have a surface that approximates what the earthwork is for our corridor. What we have is we have a top link surface that includes some of the paving material that we're going to be placing in this. And so if I use this dev core surface, what that's going to do is it's going to falsely include my concrete for my curbs, my asphalt for my road, the concrete for my sidewalk. So what we have to do is we have to create a new surface using just the earthwork information. So what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to cancel out and cancel again. We're going to navigate over to our corridor. And we're going to go ahead and go to our dev core and right click and select properties. We're going to navigate to the surfaces tab and then we're going to go ahead and create a new surface. This new surface, we're going to use a different link instead of top like we did last time. We're going to use a link called datum. And so I'll show you what where datum is and why we know that datum is the one that we want to use. But for now, we're going to go ahead and select datum and hit plus. And then we're going to go to boundaries, right click on this dev core surface, and we're going to go ahead and add corridor extents as outer boundary. So the one thing I do want to do is I want to navigate back to the name of this and I want to change this dev core surface to calc materials so that we can know that it's different than the dev core surface too. So I'm going to go ahead and hit apply and rebuild the corridor and click OK. And so up in here, what you'll notice now under surfaces, we have our calc material surface. So like I said before, we we're using the datum link to create our surface. If I go and I look at these assemblies and I go to the subassemblies, if I look at subassembly properties and I go to codes and I look at the links for our code sets as part of our subassembly, you'll notice that the top, which is the top formation links, is what we use to create our corridor surface. But the information we want is the bottom of finish grade. So what the earth is doing underneath our roadway. So that's why we chose datum. So this subassembly part was for our basic lane. You'll notice if I move on from here to my curb and I go and look at my subassembly properties and I look at my codes, I look at my links, there's also a datum there. There's also a datum for the sidewalk. And then when you get to this cut slope, there's only one link for this. So it just uses that link instead of the datum to daylight us back to the surface to create our, our finished surface. So moving on from here, now that we have the surface that we need, we can go back into Compute Materials. We can select DevAlign and DevExec1 and click OK. Now we can choose Cut and Fill. And so the quantity takeoff criteria, is there's, there's lots of options inside of here. And you can edit them and create new ones. So if I go to Edit and I go to my material list, there are, there's lots of calculations that go into these and you can add new materials, add sub criteria. For now, we're going to go ahead and just go with what's provided inside of Civil 3D and we're going to go with the cut and fill. So what we're going to do now is we're going to select our targets for our EG and datum. But before we do that, we have to set that new surface that we created into our sample lines. So we're going to navigate over to the sample lines. We're going to click on the sample line here group properties, sections, sample more sources, we're going to go find our dev core 
calc materials. We're going to click add and we're going to hit apply and OK. And now that we've done that, if we go to our analyze and compute materials and click OK, we now have the options for EG and dev core calc materials. So I'm going to select EG for my EG and I'm going to select dev core calc materials as my datum. And I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And so Civil 3D has now started the process of computing these materials. We aren't getting any output on those yet because we haven't generated a volume report. But if I go to the group properties now and I go look at the materials list, you're going to see a materials list is shown up here. And it's going to talk to us about ground removed and ground fill. And inside of each of these, it shows us our EG and our dev core calc materials. And you can put in cut and fill factors into here. So this is all the legwork that it goes into actually doing the calculations. And then once you have that legwork finished, what you're going to do is navigate again to the Analyze tab, and you're going to select Volume Report. So under Volume Report, if you select Dev Align, Dev X, Sec 1, and then you're going to select a style sheet. The style sheets, you can modify them to have them return other information or or have your company's information show up inside of these. I'm gonna go with the basic style sheet for, that comes with Civil 3D, and I'm gonna click OK. And so inside of this window, it's gonna ask me if it's safe to run scripts. I'm gonna click Yes for running the scripts, and my volume report shows up. And so inside my volume report, what you'll notice says all this information can be copied and pasted into a Word doc and edited however you'd like, or you can spend the time to create the sheet set the way you want it to be done. But know that once you're in here, this is your information about all the materials. So we have our cut and our cumulative cut and fill volumes. So as you navigate downwards, you'll notice here that there is information on our amount of cut, our amount of fill, and then what the net result of our project is. And so if it's a positive, it means that you're going to have extra earthwork on site meaning you have too much dirt on site. If it's negative, it means you're going to have to bring dirt in to the project. And so what you have to do is you have to kind of look at this and see if it makes sense. And so because our surface was so close, our corridor was so close to the existing surface, we know that as you dig dirt out to place the sidewalks on the roadway and the curbs, there's going to be a lot of extra dirt that comes out. And so this makes sense that we have quite a bit of dirt left over. One thing to note, when we were doing these earthwork materials information, and so when I go ahead and click OK here, there is one thing that you can change when you're editing these, and that's the method for which you, you calculate these. And so if I go ahead and import another criteria, what you're going to see is volume calculation method here. There are three options here. There's average end area method, prismoidal, and composite volume. So depending on how you want to have those volumes calculated, you need to select one that is consistent with how you're being required to do those, those volume calculations.